Yeah. <laughs> First roll of the night. Uh, that's a zero. Oh, what? <laughs> Wait, what? How? One minus one. Oh, wow. wow. We're breaking down episode three of Exandria Unlimited, but first, there's only three days left in my Kickstarter, so we're sending it over to Comfy Coach. Well, hello there. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Uh, that's right. There is only three days left to Alcander's Almanac of All Things. It's an expansion to Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition's combat, social encounters, and exploration pillars of the game. I'm giving you hundreds of different options of how to run your game in different ways that speak to you, and you can pick and choose whichever ones you like. Because just like I do in these breakdowns, I talk about a bunch of different ways of how you could run the game. I'm giving a bunch of different rules of how you can run the game. Not the single best rule, this is how you should do it. I'm giving you options that have multiple different levers and knobs for you to be able to tweak and change to fit you and your group. So however big you guys make this thing in the next three days is how much stuff is going to go in this book. There's already been a lot of stretch goals to unlock and I've been blown away and thank you so much for everybody that's joining in on this. This is a big move. It's something I've been working on for the last like three years in the works to be able to get it to the spot it's in. But I need your help to be able to turn this thing into an actual published book. And there's a lot of other stuff on there. Links will be down in the description to check all that stuff out. So enough of that. Let's get back to the breakdown. Thanks, Comfy Coach. But this is a spoiler warning for episode three of Exandria Unlimited. If you are watching watching this series you want to stay up to date uh you can watch these episodes of my breakdowns without having to watch this show this is not something you need to do beforehand uh you can watch this i set the points up let you know what's going on and we break down what i actually show you so there's that and there's a lot of different stuff to talk about from these professionals of the game and if you guys want to see other stuff in other games leave comments down below i go through every single one of these exandria videos the first you know, a couple days of seeing what kind of comments are thrown out there i log them i have a whole spreadsheet going on of a bunch of different things right now I'm going to keep going through Xandria Unlimited. I really do want to get these. It's only eight episodes. So I really want to get all these out and get a whole package deal for y'all. And then I'm diving into a bunch of different stuff that y'all have shown me. Dimension 20, other uh, Critical Role things, some live plays I've never seen before. I'm really excited to dive into this thing. It's it, These are really fun. So let's get into it. All right, the first play I'm breaking down here is a situation where they're in the middle of this large open marketplace and Fern, Ashley Johnson's character up in the corner here, she just got attacked by some sort of poison dart situation. She got hit by it. There was a save she had to make, all this kind of stuff. And immediately the party's like, uh-oh, what's going on? So let's pick it up with Matt. Immediately case the space around us for where that may have come from. Yeah. yeah. Squatting a little lower even than I normally am. <laughs> Sweet, give me uh, perception checks or investigation, whichever one you're better at. All of us or just them? Ooh, interesting. She asks the group for perception checks or investigation checks, whichever one you're better at. Now, I know that might seem like a very simple situation, but in a lot, some people might be like, investigation is whenever you search through stuff. And for me at my table, I have perception checks as things you look around with your senses not interacting with, and investigation is once you start touching it and move and interact with it, right? But this conversation, it's not about that. It's not about, oh, she should have not, that's not investigation. It's about, as a dungeon master, you want to be able to have your players succeed in the things that they should be able to succeed at and there's certain parts of the story that you want them to be able to find and there's certain parts that you might not so in this moment she's being a generous dm right choosing to be a generous dm and allowing investigation so some of the people that maybe don't have high perception scores or wisdom scores basically she's opening up investigation checks to be able to have these roles be higher than what they would have been and we're going to keep going a little bit further all of us or just them uh yeah no all of you are on high alert terrible also increasing the chances for them to roll high. If there's a, something behind the storyline, if there's some, some sort of roles that you want them to succeed on so that the next thing can be revealed and the dice are helping them along that way, you want to give them more options of what they can roll with and more people rolling those dice. Because if you leave it open and let them add their best score for the thing, and even as a dungeon master, you can say things like, if you can think of a different score that would be applicable here that you're higher at and to come up with a creative way, totally they could use that too. Biggest thing I want to say here is that don't be afraid as a dungeon master to make exceptions in certain situations whenever you want to be able to give them some more rope, give them some more slack on what kind of roles that they're able to make in this moment. And say something as a dungeon master just so he doesn't feel like they, you have to like contradict yourself or something. Like, All right, this time for this situation, we're, we're going to be able to do this or something to where you l allow them to do it so that the roles can be maybe artificially more high than that they want. Or if this is something where you really like, no, this would be a hard thing to do, then run it much tighter and you can be able to kind of play around with that gray area. Breakdown number two, they get to Gilmore's glorious goods. My God, it was so cool. I, I, this is, I'm not trying to break down little highlights in the moment for like Critical Role fans, but like 
Matt created Gilmore, Sean Gilmore from Gilmore's Glorious Goods. And then Abria, I didn't know if she was going to make the move to do it, but she did it. She brought him in and she role played Gilmore to Matt. It was such a really, it was really cool, like meta type thing. It was really awesome. Um, but in this specific moment to break down Dungeons and Dragons again, not critical role stuff, but Dungeons and Dragons. So they're all inside of a magic shop talking to an NPC, but there's a really cool thing that Abria asks Liam to do. Here we go. Does, does the name the nameless ones mean anything to you? It's funny when you put it that way, because... Oh, Make an insight check. He micro-expresses and then, like, regains himself. It's really low. Um, I'll give you advantage. Right there, like we just talked about. This is a good pulse check where Abria wants him to succeed at this moment. This would be a really cool thing for him to have some insight into what Gilmore is thinking and all this kind of stuff. Give some little clues out there, right? And Liam, as a communicating player, he's like, ah, oh, it's really low. And it, you see Abria's face like, eh, and she's instantly trying to think of what she can do to help this role facilitate higher. Let's, let's replay, let's give a little replay action here. And then like regains himself. It's really low. Um... I'll give you advantage if you give me a good reason. There it is. Uh, if you give me a good reason. Um, I love that. This is the entire point. This is the entire point. We're gonna. I'm going to show you what he says to this, but this is the point I'm making. That is awesome. I, I challenge your players. You are, as a dungeon, I just got... I'm getting out of soapbox now. As a dungeon master, you're trying to not just play Dungeons and Dragons with your players. You make them better players. Make them better at role play. Make them better at combat. Whatever parts of the game that they they can improve at, and they're going to feel that sense of being in, in, more comfortable role playing, more comfortable thinking as their character, more comfortable in combat across the board. Whatever it is, but give me a reason, right? And if they don't come up with a reason, then I mean, then that's fine. Then you offered off the olive branch, they couldn't come up with anything, but at least you tried. It's a win-win. You either offer it up and they can't come up with anything, but you still are a nice dungeon master for trying, or you give them a moment to really try and come up with something and challenge them a little bit. Let's see what Liam says though. I know how connected he is to the history of this city. And he micro expresses. And that's all you need. She wasn't looking for some super like, no, okay, hey, show me. You better give me a good explanation. Like she just wanted something, you know? And he understands who this person is and how big of a role that they play, right? That's all it was. Now, if you would try and break that down, is that makes does that make sense as to how we'd be able to know his, his subtle facial expressions and stuff? Maybe not, but he, this guy knows Gilmore and he knows how big of a person he is and he's really paying attention to everything. So cool. That's good enough. He gets advantage. Go with it. Third point here we're breaking down. Speaking of great player role play, Matt in the shoes of a player. Here's a little highlight of a moment where he's role playing his character still in this magic shop. Gilmore has left and they are now buying some stuff, but a buying a shop, and this is as a dungeon master, side note here, is if you just want to run a shop, you don't have to play the NPC. You don't have to play the storekeeper. Just let them shop. What do you guys want? What do you want to have here? And they can have a persuasion role and be like, okay, you'd be able to get it for this much. And you can just literally just, you can run it through real quick like that. Again, it's up to you at your table what that moment is versus not. Do you want to introduce a cool new NPC or do you just want to get through so you can get to the next part, right? So this is on the other side of that spectrum. Look at these different ways that you can take something stereotypically boring like a shopping scene and get player development and have really cool stuff happen. So here's um, Matt Mercer buying some items. How much we got? For a normal spear, gloves in the vial is yeah. 752 gold. <laughs> With the discount, right? Um, for you, I could take off another like 150 gold. All right, Damn. 900 gold it is. You got it. <laughs> so he goes ahead and counts out the platinum and the gold and passes it over. It's a pleasure doing business. With make you. a persuasion check for me. <laughs> no, it's it's just a general charisma. No, let's make it a persuasion. Okay, uh, 14. It's just real quick there. I would feel the same way, Bria. Like what a player just throws out, they are purposely losing. Just for the record, because uh, you know I I am a math teacher. Seven hundred fifty gold. She says she'll subtract off one hundred and fifty. Six hundred is supposed to be what he's supposed to pay, but he says nine hundred because his whole character is is like this. So this is right on point. Um, and this this 
he's giving away 300 gold just as the sake of it but that's just so cool is is doing something that's not ideal and playing into your character's role play but you can see how everybody's like this is persuasion wait the charisma like these are the moments i love the most in dungeons and dragons where you have to come up with checks for the weirdest stuff so let's just keep watching this she looks at you just <laughs> utterly bewildered okay first thing you don't pay me directly you have to go to sherry at the front oh sorry but also hold on hold on hold on oh, God. and she like pushes uh you paid her too much and she, like 600. You drive a hard bargain. Deal. What is hap? Do you require an adult? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. It's something super simple, but I did want to just highlight this little moment here where he's so in character that even her response of paying too much, he's like, you drive a hard bargain. Like, he's just so in that character. Something is could be super, super simple, like I want these things, it costs this much, I also get a spear. And you can have this be a quick inter exchange of things. Or you could just do a little role play, spice things up. So players out there, throw, throw some curveballs at your DM and really just take that role play your character to the next level. Well, number four now. They have been in this shop for over an hour now. And if you, you know what I'm talking about when you're in magic shops, especially. But shopping episodes where you're in there for forever and we just talked about how you can shorten it up and this is kind of going a little too far. And I think this is a very awesome uh, intervention on Abria's part into this whole thing where she just completely pulls out and be like, OK, listen up. Uh, you'll see what's going on. So the shopping episode has gone on for a for a while now. The shopping section has gone on for a while now. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. And she's already swapped out the clerks. Like the clerk she was role playing is like even the, her role play character is over it. And that she leaves, and another NPC comes over to take the person's spot um, as like a, almost a little cue for the players to like let's wrap it up or something. But here's uh, the the break that happens. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. I am not going to keep recalculating prices in my brain because like I got it. Yeah, I got it. You're good. If y'all are coming in under like where your numbers are, the numbers are set. We're good. I trust you to finish these transactions because this is not the fun part of this game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, can we please leave? Oh God, I was like, I can't keep doing four digit math. More haggling, let's go. Okay. <laughs> if you want to keep haggling, that's fine. But when you get a set price that you're good with, just deduct it. Done. Have to Channel okay. Travis Willingham for a minute there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love shopping I and I, I felt myself reach the end of shopping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was right there. And see. Yep, and, and okay. See. But how awesome is that for Bria to openly say like, okay, she has a great pulse check on the game to know like, okay, this is too much. Maybe some other players are feeling the same thing because if you're feeling it, there's a chance someone else is too. But as a dungeon master, you're in control of these type of moments. So say, speak up, talk about this. But what's funny is Amy's not done yet. She's going to keep going. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So I... <laughs> so so I... Deeply ignored my social cues. You're good. Go ahead. So, um... <laughs> Deeply ignored my social cues. Not only social cues, straight up saying it. And then here comes Amy with a big smile. <laughs> I've got 110 gold left. What spell gem can I buy with that? <laughs> <laughs> What's the most powerful thing that can be bought for 116 yes. gold? Yes. <laughs> I am not Rocky Georgia. Carrero's daughter Georgia. if I did not try. Georgia. So there's, <laughs> so as a, I don't know if there's something to learn from that necessarily, but players listen to your dungeon master's cues and may, maybe just wrap that up and let the 116 gold go or something. But super funny moment at the table, they're gonna finish it up. And either way, you communicate how you're feeling about all of this and then, <laughs> Move on to the next thing, so let's go. The fifth thing here, I do so much, and I really do love this, and it's really cool to see Abria do the same thing. They are about to set off and travel. They've gotten in their stagecoach, and they are heading off, and she just wants to see if anything will happen, like spice some things up here, and let's see how she does it. Well, I've never been in a who's gonna before. Be, who's gonna be my lucky, who feels lucky rolling? Because we need to see if a thing happens. Since my game today is you think it's me. Yeah! <laughs> Do it. You got all your it's ones. a one. You got all your ones out of the way. That's yeah, true. Come Just on. roll a d20 for me. We'll Come see on. how we do. 
done, right? Before I show what happens, let the player do it. There's You could easily have an encounter where you take a d20 and you roll it and then there's some number that happens. The player is going to feel a lot more connected to it and feel uh, like whenever the, the roll is low or the roll is high or whatever, they're going to feel a little bit more connected to that, that they had control of their destiny, even though it is just a d20 roll, no matter who's rolling it. But let's keep going. Hell yeah. Three. Oh, oh, no! Oh, idiot! Oh my god. He's the worst <laughs> roller ever is. Oh. You know what I did? You had all our goodwill. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Put the crown on. <laughs> So uh, it's just, now whatever happens after this is going to feel uh, uh, they're going to feel more connected to it. Specifically, Matt <laughs> is going to feel more connected to it besides her rolling and it being a three. And then like this bad thing happens. You know what I mean? It's just feels like this inevitable thing that was going to happen no matter what. But because the players rolled it, it, it sometimes feels a lot better. So and we're going to get into this final part here, because what happens is Pasca, uh, leader of the nameless ones, is comes up next to them. And there's this really very terrible. She jumps on top of their stagecoach, takes over it completely. They are basically on a high-speed run with two chariots around next to them. And they are, uh, Pasca is controlling their stagecoach. So it's a crazy situation. Let's see what happens. All right, the big final scene of the episode. Like I just described, there's these stagecoaches that have been hijacked by Pasca. They are screwed. They have no idea what's on the outside, how many of them there are, how many people are in those stagecoaches. It's looking bad, like looking real bad. And this is a very unique situation in 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 D and D. I was like, oh, what's this? What's gonna happen? This is big. This is really big. So it's how how high the stakes were and how high the stage was set was really huge. So let's see. What happens and how they get out of it? They're kind of stumped. I'm gonna cast Charm Person. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's the stuff. Okay. God, I wish I had What's the DC? 14 wisdom. I rolled a 13. She beat me. Yeah. No. No. Isn't it match? She rolls a 13, which just falls short of the DC of 14 that she would have had to roll. So she's one, one point lower, right? So now Pasca would be under the effect of Charm Person. And we've went over this in last episode of Exandria Limited Breakdowns about the Charm Person spell and how powerful it is and different Dungeon Master's views on how much you want to, how much slack you want to give people, right? So this is very interesting to me. And I'm comment down below how you how you felt about this situation because what happens if to not play the entire thing because it would be a longer clip and I'm trying to only show clips and then we'll talk about it. But she gets Charm Person off. And what happens is, now again, my perspective of, of what would happen in Charm Person, because I'm trying to get into a Bria's head, I'm trying to get into what I would do. I want you to do the same thing, right? I want to know what you guys would want to do. I'm not saying what I would do is better than what she, my goodness, there's been so many awesome moves that she's made. Each of us are going to run things differently and lead to different awesome things. Um, and same thing with you. What would you do in this situation? So I see she cast Charm Person. Okay, so now Pasca reveres Ashley as friendly. Okay, she doesn't care about the rest of them. The whole charm person doesn't affect anyone else. It's just them two, right? So P Pasca now sees Ashley as a friend, but all the rest of the people in there who have the crown, like they have the they have a vestige of divergence. I don't care if Ashley's my friend. If I'm after a vestige of, vestige of divergence with this entire thing and the rest of the nameless ones all around me, that's not going to be enough to... Now, it's going to maybe help, and it's going to be cool, and maybe something else can happen, but this this is a really big, bad scenario that's happening, and I don't know if Charm Person, just one-on-one, -on -one, is going to be enough to turn the tides, because what happens is, is Pasca literally stops the stagecoach, lets them, like, 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 talks to them, and then lets them go on their merry way, and they continue off. They have a conversation, they have an exchange, and she sees that she's, you know, Abria role plays herself fighting this little urge and sensation, but it's it's a very, it's a, again, like we talked about last time, it's a very bold and big allowance of the Charm Person spell. Last time we talked about this, Amy's character uh, used Charm Person against two little guards. So again, much lower stakes in those situations, I would probably be more likely to do what Abria did and give Charm Person and run it almost like a mind control in some sort of ways and have a lot of power in this Charm Person spell. But in this situation, it's a big, huge thing. But again, I'm about to break something down here in a second. Um, big, huge thing. I might be like, okay, like she's going to revere you and maybe she doesn't harm Ashley and maybe she like brings Ashley over next to her and 
you know, play it out that way. Um, but I don't know if it would just be a complete swipe stop and then let them leave. Cause whenever they left, I was like, Oh, okay. Like when I, my, I was waiting for something really big to happen. And then this was the thing that solved it. And so I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And it, it made me have these thoughts that I want to share with you guys. Uh, because now we're going to oh, go take a big step back here. And it might sound like I'm about to contradict myself, but I am, I'm trying to analyze this whole thing. Abria threw this huge thing at it. Matt rolled that three that we talked about. Roll a d20, see what happens. He rolled a three and then Pasca came up, right? And then it's this really bad scenario. As a dungeon master, you can have this be, you, they don't know how many people are in the stagecoaches. There could be maybe two, two, and then Pasca. And it could be a two bad guys versus Pasca. And that could be a five on five battle. You could totally have that happen. Uh, and you can change the numbers behind the scenes if you need to or whatever you need. I have no idea what <laughs> Abria was thinking uh, as far as how many people they were initially but i'm saying that's a gray area there for you to be able to change stuff up on so once these they roll up on her and there it's this really bad stakes scenario now maybe things were so bad that abria wants them to get away and, the, and like we talked about at the beginning of this thing this whole episode's tying together um and she wants to let them go she was wanting them to get out of this and she's waiting for and if you saw the clip i just showed there's a pretty decent chunk of silence before ashley threw out the charm person spell so this might be her shot you know at letting them kind of get away with this and letting ashley save the day and this is what abria wants she doesn't want this to be a combat right now she wants that she has other plans in mind for Pasca and all this kind of stuff she wants to keep Pasca looming over them and they maybe they need to go off because this is only an eight shot and there's certain things happening here so she could be that's an that's a, a good reason to be more allowing of certain spells and let them be more powerful than maybe they normally would be so she lets them get away with it because maybe she wants them to go to that next part of the story and give ashley a cool awesome like she did it type of victory moment that's totally a viable solution especially with all the different circumstances we've been talking about so my overall thoughts in this breakdown moment is maybe if she had to ran it tighter and not let this be a solution to this possible problem that she presented to the players. Maybe it was too much. Maybe the, all the other roles and it wasn't really going their way or whatever. Maybe if this wasn't presented as an out and they did have to have some sort of altercation with uh, with Pasca, that would have caused some sort of uh, problem with other story events and other things going on. Maybe it would have derailed the, the, the eight session thing of what has planned for. I don't know. So she might have been just looking for what the solution was for them to get out of it and Ashley presented with it and she ran with it. So the MVP from this episode because y'all liked it last time is going to abria even though it's not technically most valuable player it'd be mvdm i guess i think she did a great job of showing how as a dungeon master you can control the flow of the game whether it's intervening on a combat scene and being like nope asking people for checks and being more lenient with things when things are supposed to keep rolling and flowing being a little stricter whenever you need to being able to control your game props to you Bria. so if you like this video let me know hit that like button make sure to check out my kickstarter again there's only three days left on it there's gonna be links down in the description that 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 link will also take you to uh the page whenever it is finished and you can see that there too if this you're watching this in the future sometime when you eventually get around to watching all of this stuff that critical role has to offer so until next time stay creative think outside that box peace